an absolutely brilliant idea to start coming up with different topics and things that I can go through with you guys to help you guys to get more familiar with your wigs. So today, as you've seen by the title, we're going to be doing top four things that you need to know about wearing a wig for beginners. Now, if you're a pro, you can zoom through right through this and you're already going to know every step. You might be able to go through it just to kind of get familiar with my technique because sometimes I feel like even though I have a good handle on wigs, I watch other professionals or people who um, have a good amount of experience with wigs just to kind of, you think, even if you think you know everything, sometimes you don't. So I'm going to be featuring a brand by the name of China Lace Wigs. You guys know, these are my friends. I love them. I've done probably at least 10 reviews for this company. Probably going to review every single wig on the website because I absolutely love working with them. They are a pleasure to work with and they have some bomb wigs. So I forgot what I ordered so I went ahead and opened the packaging but if you guys have seen I've done a ton of videos for this company. Um, it comes in a little plastic like this. I actually tried to get it back in um, but it fits like a glove so I couldn't get it back in without ripping um, the clear plastic. Get it on out and you have the box. This is kind of disposable but you have some of your favorite videos on there. Like if you recognize any of that quick clip. We have the bag. This I have like a million of these bags in my cabinet. Some of you have received wigs from wig sales um, with the bag like this inside your package, and it wasn't even China, China lace wig because I have so many. And then you have the actual wig. This wig is 22 inches, 180 percent density. Honestly, it feels fuller than that. And then you have the logo embossed there as well. So this one looks pretty plugged. You got some beautiful baby hair. I don't know if it shows up without putting it on the mannequin head too well. But I'll show you what the wig looks like on. Um, you have three combs in the front, one in the back, adjustable straps. Like almost all the wigs I review, um, especially these from China Lace Wigs. I do like these wigs because they do fit really good. The fact that this one is kind of pre-plugged is going to help me to... Give it to you guys real good without having to do too much. So I'm going to go through the four things you need to know about wearing your wigs. And this is what the hair looks like on really quickly. I believe it's super beautiful. So I'm going to go through the four tips with you guys that I have that are going to help you start to finish slay your wig beginner friendly. And these are pretty much the tips that are going to help you to have the best possible outcome with all of your wigs if you go by these four tips. But step one is going to be deciding what kind of cap you want to wear underneath. So I've got a head start and I've already cut off the excess lace. I've already got this here and I'll tell you in a moment what this is. And I also have a cap. So I'm pretty positive that you guys are all familiar with what this is under here. This is a wig cap. So as of right now, don't judge my peanut shape head, but this is the wig cap that I love the most. This is a nice brown wig cap. I get these from Amazon. I buy them in bulk. I always keep a bunch on hand so that when one gets raggedy or dingy or gets a hole in it or put makeup on it and it's grossing me out, I can, I can switch them out easily. As you can see, this one blends with my skin amazingly. It's not the exact same color or tone as my skin, but it's dark enough to blend and still light enough that it won't be darker than or too dark for my skin, if that makes sense. You also have black wig caps, which is what we used to use originally. Obviously, a black wig cap is going to be too dark nowadays and there are too many other options. Um, these are a few tan here. As you can see, they come in a ton of different colors. You just have to find them in the right colors. But I have brown here. There's a darker brown. There's like two shades that are darker brown than this. These are both tan, but you can see this one is a little bit more yellowy tan. And this one is more nudie browny tan. Um, if I didn't have access to this, I would use this one because it's more my tone than this yellow. But I can still put my foundation powder on top um, and make it work. Also bought this big bulk. You guys have seen this before. I accidentally bought the wrong color and this is just like a big bulk of them. I use these literally for everything um, and this one is considered beige and they show you here that they have dark brown and they have black. These two colors I would not recommend unless you're super duper chocolate which if obviously that would be your skin tone then of course you would use that. So after you know that you have a wig cap that's going to make the lace look really good when you do your parting and it's going to bleed through and see through as if the wig is coming out of your scalp, the second step is going to be to bleach your knots. 
Now, in my case, I don't always bleach the knots. There are plenty of creators and stylists that never, ever, ever, ever bleach the knots and their wigs always look fly and fabulous. I think that for me personally, I do love to bleach my knots, but it is a time consuming. It's messy. It's a chemical that's harsh. Um, and I feel like a lot of times I can get the same outcome from using bleachless products such so bleaching the knots is definitely a good idea if you know what you're doing if you're a beginner and you don't want to ruin your lace i have a handful of options here for you if you want to bleach your knots i have a tutorial link down below for you to check that out that'll explain in depth how to bleach your knots um this is something that i've used and i love for under the lace I love to put a nice coat of something under the lace that will make the wig, um, the lace look like my skin tone, um, conceal the knots so that I can't see the knots without using a bleach. And this is the airbrush leg spray from Sally Hansen in the color medium glow. This one is obviously lighter than my skin tone but it's still brown enough that it does the trick. Another option is using powders. Um, these are two foundation powders. This one. Um, is probably the closest to my skin tone out of the two. And this is just a drugstore powder foundation. This is the L'Oreal True Match powder in the color Cool C8 Cocoa. Um, this one works great because it's not my skin tone perfectly, but it's I'd rather be lighter than and darker than my skin tone if that makes any sense. And so it's still bright and it pops, but it's still like you know close enough to my skin tone. Or um, this used to be my holy grail, but I've gotten much darker than this over time. And this is the mini this is the um, mineralized skin finish natural in the color dark. This used to actually be my skin tone before I had my son, but we used to go on walks, and I've gotten more chocolatey. And this no longer is my color. If you don't have a foundation, foundation powder probably is going to be your easiest bet. You can also use concealer, um, or a lot of us have these like multi-pack eyeshadow palettes. Find yourself like a good brown eyeshadow palette and you're bound to find one um, that is close enough to your skin tone. Can you guess which one is mine? This one here. I've used the heck out of this. It's time to get a new one. And this one I picked up from the Morphe store and it is in the color of the Style 25D. Just Google um, brown eyeshadow palettes on Amazon and you'll find one. I'll link one down below. So as crazy as it seems, the Sally Hansen's Leg Spray is the easiest option. I'm going to go ahead and do it on camera. You might want to let it dry a little bit. It does come out like a spray, so you can kind of see it's a little bit blotchy. You can use like a powder brush, a foundation brush. To kind of just buff it and move it around so that it all blends together. If you don't use this, just use the powders and you can kind of basically use the same brush like this and just buff it in. Now I'm going to take a holding spray. And I'm going to let this dry. So now that this is dry, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next step. So step one was to pick the perfect cap so that it looks like a nude cap on you. Everybody's nude is completely different. This is mine. Step two was to bleach, conceal, however you want to say it, to make your knots disappear. I chose the Sally Hansen Leg Spray on the inside. I'm also going to add a powder on the outside. So I showed you a bunch of powder options that kind of tint the lace so that no matter where I part it, it'll kind of look like the lace blends perfectly with my skin tone. And then this is what I'm going to use on the outside once I make my parting and I'm almost done styling the wig. And this is just going to make it pop. Um, if I miss the space, um, if you can still see knots, this is going to help to cover it up and kind of seal in that cream. So step three is going to be all about securing the lace. I know it's popular right now to secure the bag, but before you can secure the bag and step out of your house, you have to secure your lace. We all love to look fly in our lace wigs. You have to use something that is going to help it to not move or slide back. So here are a few different options. The first one is to bomb the wig down. 
This is more so for a more advanced person, a more professional. If you want to be brave and experience this and experiment with this um, as a beginner, you definitely have that option. Just don't rip out your edges. Try to do it in front of your edges. This is the ghost bond. I feel like this was a holy grail in a lot of like hairstylists' kits. This still is a holy grail. Um, the bold hold is another one that I don't physically have, but that one is kind of a newer one that has kind of like overshadow the gold spawn but gold spawn and bold hold are like two of the most popular you also have wig tape that you can use and this is an option that's going to last you like a week two weeks maybe even three weeks and you might have to actually use a remover to get it off so this is going to be like the strongest hold the longest hold the most professional and that is an actual wig glue or tape so the next option is going to be a more temporary hold. Um, it's going to give you the same look as the ghost bond or any of the wig glues or tape, but it's going to be a gel opposed to an actual glue. So this one is less likely to rip out your edges. It's also going to last a little bit or a little less longer. This looks really good and you can have this look just as good as your wig glue or tape. But if you get in a shower and you get your edges wet like I do most of the time, the moment that water hits your edges or where you apply this, it's going to move. So this is a really good daily, every other day, every two or three days application for a flawless look. Now, some of us just don't have the time, just don't have the energy. I'm a mom of two. When I get up in the morning, I honestly, I honestly just don't have time to do ghost bond, bold hold in the morning. So I go for the glueless options. Those are the glue options. This is glueless options. So I just recently did a review or a tutorial on this option as well as this option and I have them both linked down below. This here is the elastic band method. I won't go too detailed into it, but the objective is to cut a piece of elastic, sew it down so that when it pulls, when the elastic pulls, it sort of pulls the wig super tight and it won't move off of your hairline. This is kind of the holy grail that I've done for years now and I will continue to do. This is a newer this is a newer option or at least newer to me and this is the wig grip. Now you can use these in combination with one another if you really really want to be secure. Place it to the side. Wrap it around kind of tight exactly on here like so. This is what it looks like. Also secure your wig from the back, sis. So make sure you secure it and add those adjustable straps as tight as you need in the back. It's not sliding back. It's absolutely not going anywhere. Now what I love about the wig grip is that it's going to make your wig stay in place and it's not going to move. Now the fourth tip and fourth step is going to be to style the wig with all your might. Put every effort you can into slaying the heck out of the wig. Now, it honestly doesn't matter what the ends look like. I can keep it like this and people can say whatever they want. But, but if this edges and this baby hair is popping, my parting, my top knot bun or whatever I do to the top is popping, all this ain't gonna matter because people are gonna still say you killed that sis. So baby hair is key. So off camera I went ahead and styled the ends of the hair. Isn't it cool? Just didn't want to bore you with that. But now we're gonna go ahead and make baby hair. The pros to the wig group is that this wig is not gonna move but like right here it is still loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my baby hair and when I make my baby hair it's gonna double as um a way to secure that if that makes any sense because it's going to kind of bond it down so that's kind of the one con to the wig grip i honestly would recommend using the elastic and the wig grip that way you don't feel obligated to secure the wig down as much oh this looks cute i look cute y'all <laughs> 
So doing your baby hair is just as simple as doing your natural baby hair. You want to cut the hair down short enough to actually be baby hair. It is a million times easier to swoop baby hair if it is shorter than the rest of the hair in the sense that if it's super long, it's going to get caught, mixed in with the rest of the hair. If it's short, it, you know, it's simple. So I'm cutting down pieces by pieces. This wig is slightly pre-plucked. Um, again, this is a super high density wig. So of course, even though it's pre-plucked, it's still very full. So I would recommend tweezing it out. Um, but I chose not to today. Now you see, I just did cut off the ear tabs. Those are things that you can keep and you can use like the got to be glued to bond them down. I did not want to have to bond down daily. So I cut them off and it blends perfectly and I don't have anything lifting or moving on the side near my ears. Now this wig is super dense, so you will have to tweeze it, but I decided to do a top knot. And the fourth and final step, of course, was to just slay the hair, slay the edge, slay the hair with what you Got. If you got if your mama school baby hair, be like, Mama, can you do my baby hair? And maybe she can do it and make it look good. If the ends look a little crazy, cold wash, deep condition. Do what you gotta do. If this looks crazy after a couple weeks and the curls give out or whatever, depending on what brand of hair you use, go ahead and put it in ponytail or a bun or put two French braids. Just take your time and care and love on your hair because when your hair is done, you can be as ashy as all outdoors and you're still gonna look cute, you know what I mean? Not literally, put some lotion on to dry out here, guys. But anyways, I hope these four tips were helpful. I don't want you guys to feel intimidated like that you have to be a pro for your hair to look amazing. As I always tell people, fake it till you make it. Use concealer if you don't know how to bleach knots. Co-wash with some of the cheapest stuff and just add natural oils. Those natural oils are gonna work better than the salon quality stuff anyways. And just do what you got and find your way to make your hair look good. And when you find a one style or one type of wig um, that looks good, stick with that and practice on the side for other stuff. But just stick to what you know and perfect it as you go. That's the model of tonight. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out China Lace Wigs. As always, I absolutely love their wigs. As always, I vouch for their wigs that they are amazing. They're always amazing quality to me. They last. The beautiful curl pattern is amazing. I have this one linked in the description bar for you to check out. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.